good day, teachers. I hope you're having a productive day. I am Teacher April, and today we will explore and revisit one of the most widely used yet useful teaching pedagogies. So engage yourself as we learn and unfold the secrets of making our teaching lives easy and fun at the same time. We believe together we can. Do you remember the famous quote by Confucius? I hear and I forget. I see and I remember. I do and I understand. Can you think of a teaching strategy that better connects to this quote? I know you have a lot on your mind right now. Today, let us go through the very popular and very effective teaching strategy, the explicit teaching. Let me share to you some ideas on how teaching and learning happen in one single method and three simple steps. Yes, you heard it right! With one single method and with three simple steps, effective teaching and learning can happen. Before going through the method and steps, let us know what Explicit teaching is. Explicit or direct teaching instruction is an approach to teaching that helps all students, especially those who learn and think differently. Teachers use explicit instruction to teach concepts or skills in a very structured way. Explicit teaching is clear, direct, and structured. How do you think it is used as a strategy? Explicit teaching is used when teachers clearly explain to students why they are learning something, how it connects to what they already know, how to do it, and what it looks like when they have succeeded. This can be done in three simple steps. The I do, we do, you do model involves you in following a series of steps starting with you leading instruction and finishing with students working independently. In the I do stage, you explain what students need to understand or model how to do a process. This process is done when the teacher will explain the lesson and demonstrate how the steps or process of their tasks are being done. In this process, the teacher can provide a lot of examples which students can use as basis for coming up with their own output. Before we proceed into the very discussion of the lesson about persuasive text, let's first define it. Persuasive text is a type of essay that convinces or persuades the readers to agree or believe with the opinions and stated facts of or from the writer. According to the structure, there are three parts of persuasive text. The introduction, the body, and the conclusion. Learners, please listen as I break down the parts and discuss each. At the same time, let me help you comprehend how to write a persuasive text following the given details. Let me start. An introduction must be short and catchy. And it should start with a fact, a strong statement, 
a thought-provoking question, a narration of an event, or even a funny story. An introduction must contain a news peg and a thesis statement. A news peg is the source of information. It also gives you an idea about the issue or situation while the thesis statement is the reaction of the writer to the issue or situation. This time, let me show you an example. This is for paragraph 1 and part of the introduction. Let me read to you the example. Face-to-face -face learning is considered one of the many ways to improve the quality of distant education by providing better academic instructions and interactions among teachers and students. However, in the onset of the global pandemic, many modes of learning have arisen to supplement better traditional face-to-face -face classroom learning, and one of which is the online learning. Take note of the highlighted text. It's the news peg. Let's now proceed to paragraph number two and still part of the introduction. Let me read. The new era of accessing education is introduced as a blended learning integrating both online learning approaches and face-to-face -face classroom learning. Yet, we strongly believe that face-to-face -face learning is ideally more effective than online learning. The highlighted text is the thesis statement. Let's continue with the body. It presents and develops at least three arguments. It also supports each argument with facts, statistics, or examples. Supporting your arguments with facts will make the reader believe in your views. Let me read to you paragraph number three. First, the call for online learning teaching for teachers requires more professional expansion in terms of information and communications technologies which can highly influence the pedagogical development of learning. According to Wilson and Stacy, 2004, a staged approach matching the readiness levels of teachers in upgrading from the usual face-to-face -to, -face to online learning practices takes time and resources. In developing countries, these were not a priority. The highlighted text is the first argument, and the rest are the supporting facts. Let me proceed to paragraph number four. Let me read it for you. Second, it is not clearly evident in online learning about learners adapting to real-life experiences. Baskin 2001 posits that students learn collaboratively through assessment tasks or problem-solving activities. Students responded positively to the experiences which were interacted in a face-to-face -face setup. Students shared and interpreted data and shared resources and fieldwork results as a product of collaboration among other learners. The highlighted text is the second argument and the text that comes next to it are the facts presented. Now, on the last argument, let me read to you. Third, evaluation and assessment in online learning were jeopardized in terms of validity and reliability. According to a study, a correlation of the reliability of online education and interpretations shows deterioration in the coherence in online education. The value of the reliability after computation showed the level of reliability of the test to be 0.67, meaning 
the mean rating shows a wide discrepancy. And the correlation was very low, indicating a non-authentic assessment in an online educational system. Again, the highlighted text is the final argument and the succeeding text is the facts presented. I believe you're still up for more. Then, let me grant you your wishes. In the next paragraph, it's still considered part of the body. It is called the counterstatement. It is where you slightly oppose your claim to give a clear view of both sides of the issue. Let me read. On the other hand, the importance of online learning as the last decade's new pedagogical paradigm in education is evident in the number of studies that examine its value to learners. Through the widespread use of computer conferencing, Moreover, the potential within the online environment for collaborative learning and the mutual support among students was identified early when online learning first emerged in the late 1980s and gained momentum in 1990s. The highlighted text is the counterstatement. It opposes my claim on the introduction and to end the body of your persuasive text you must give a suggestion or a solution to your claim let me read this pandemic has changed the course of learning 360 degrees learning will always be based on the teacher's mastery of instructions and students adaptability to pedagogical development whether online or face-to-face. -face. Teachers and students must share the same enthusiasm in learning development, whether in a face-to-face -face or online education. See, the paragraph is entirely about giving suggestions or solutions. This time, let's proceed to the last part of the persuasive text. It's the conclusion. In conclusion, you may recap the main points of your persuasive text or appeal to the readers to do something. Finally, you may present a forecast, possible effect, or thought-provoking question. Let me read to you the last paragraph that contains the conclusion. Indeed, face-to-face -face learning is more effective than online learning considering the stated reasons above. Overall, the teaching mode does not affect the entire philosophy or the pedagogy, but it interchanges learning from experiences. Surely, face-to-face -face learning and teaching will result in better learners and teachers. So what are you waiting for? Grab your pens and papers and be ready for the possible face-to-face -face classes. Please take note of the last sentence. It asks you to do something or actuate on something. So what are you waiting for? Grab your pens and papers and be ready for the possible face-to-face -face classes. There you have it. These are the things that we have to include when writing a very effective persuasive text. By the way, the title of the text is All Praise Face to Face. Then, in the We Do stage, you help your students by providing scaffolds such as prompts or partially completed procedures. Guided practice, also referred to as directed practice, allows students with proper support to succeed in achieving the desired learning objectives.
In this phase, the teacher will now guide the students on doing the process. The student will do the task together with their teacher while guiding them in doing it. This time, let's engage ourselves in an activity. I mean, you and me will do an activity. This activity is called Complete and Persuade Me. Here are the instructions. I'm going to present to you an activity sheet. This activity sheet is a persuasive text review form. In this persuasive text review form, you can find list of the essential parts of a persuasive text. You will complete the missing text by providing adequate information to complete the paragraph. The text presented or given can serve as your basis in constructing the text. Let me guide you. In the introduction part, the first paragraph must contain the new spec. Now let me remind you that in the news peg, you have to give the necessary information for the readers to know what the entire persuasive text is all about. In your activity, the news peg is not given. So you may come up with your own news peg using the supported text that comes after it. Let's try to dig in using my example. In the first paragraph, I have supplied the text that will give you an idea on what could be the possible news peg. Let me read. What did not shut down were the crucial services that they provided. Instead, librarians stepped up and zeroed in on their passion to serve the public, acting as first responders and amplifying their steadfast commitment to ensure people have access to public information. In the supporting text, it suggests an idea about libraries, specifically on its crucial role during pandemic and how it upgraded to be more accessible to public. So what do you think is a news peg? Do we have the same idea to be written on our news peg? Let us check. Here is my news peg. Let me read. On the outbreak of the global pandemic that hit in the early 2020, libraries across the world shut down their buildings to limit transmission of the virus. Take note, this is just an example to guide you. You can compose your own news peg based on your gathered information. What is important is that, in the first paragraph, you must be able to include the news peg. Next is the second paragraph, which is still part of the introduction. You have to give your reaction to the situation or issue, or in simple term, you give your side. It's called the thesis statement. In the second paragraph, I have supplied the text that will give you an idea about what is the thesis statement. Now let me read. This has happened in multiple creative ways. From turning book mobile vans into roaming hotspots delivering Wi-Fi throughout the community, to extending library Wi-Fi access into parking lots and beyond. Now, what do you think? is a thesis statement. Here, as COVID-19 worsens issue associated with this information, libraries are playing even more of a key role in the dissemination of true and genuine information, either related to work or studies or just for self-consumption. Take note, we can have different thesis statements depending on the situation or issue that is presented. My example was to serve a basis for your composition. 
This time, it's your time to do the rest of the activity. Don't worry, you would be guided with supported text that you need in the remaining paragraphs. You are also guided by the persuasive text review form. You may have different answers on this activity. My purpose is to guide you on how to write effective, persuasive text, following the correct structures. A copy of the persuasive text review form would be available for everybody. Together with it are the rubrics and the pointing system. You are given 15 minutes to accomplish the activity. After 15 minutes, you may submit to me your work and let's evaluate each of your work together. Take note, we may have different answers, but my persuasive text review form for this activity can help you evaluate your work and even make it as a basis for your next activity. Wow! That was a very impressive job, learners! Let me congratulate everyone, including myself, for a very excellent job. Let's do the excellent club. One, two, three. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Finally, in the you do stage, your students do the procedure or show their understanding on their own. Independent practice allows students to put themselves in new learning situations where they can apply what they have understood from the modeling and guided practice steps. These final learning steps provide students with an opportunity to test out their understanding in order to obtain the highest level of mastery possible with the goal of consolidating their learning. This step also identifies any students who may be in need of some additional support before they move on. This time, let me check your academic independence. If on the recent activity I was with you while accomplishing it, but now it would only be you. Are you ready? R-E-A-D-Y? Directions. Write your persuasive text using the persuasive text review form as your guide. You can choose one from the given pictures as your basis of the situation or issue. After answering the persuasive text review form, you may rewrite the entire text on a separate sheet of paper. Use the rubrics as your basis for writing your persuasive text. The rubrics will be flashed on your screen. There we have it, dear teachers. That's where explicit instruction comes in. It can be used with students of all ages. It can be taught with a full class, small group of students, or one student at a time. I hope you have learned something today, dear teachers. Let me leave you with this quote from B.F. Skinner. Education is what survives when what has been learned is forgotten.